Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams. I'm your host, and to my right and to your left, of course, is the great Amanda Lamarue Smith. Hi. Hello, Amanda. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thanks. And we're coming to you live from our beautiful studios here at BNN TV, and you're more than welcome to join us if you'd like. We're at 617 708 3290. Davey and the great staff of being in the other room answering the phone. So please feel free to give us a call and join us. Uh, we'd love to hear what's happening in your neck of the woods. How you doing? I'm glad you're back. I know. You weren't feeling well. I was not feeling well last week. We had uh, something going around the office. Just something going around the new office where you're in with new people and stuff, know. you know. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, going to that revival concert in the mud bowl. No, I'm only kidding. What? <laughs> no, I won't get <laughs> going out and rocking and rolling. Yeah. That's what usually makes me late for things, but it's okay. Uh, how have you been? Good. Anything artful going on? Um, uh, yeah, I went to an open studios uh, for uh, the founder of our company, oh, nice. wife, had, uh, in Warwick, Rhode Island. Nice. We went this weekend, and um, it was great. I loved she had these postcards that um, were actual cuts from her... Uh, paintings that didn't make it, as she says. So, so she cuts them up. Yeah. So she said she did, she didn't like how they looked big. So she said she cut them in. And she, they're, they're beautiful, greedy cards. So I got a bunch of those because I love that. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's well, like you do that kind of thing. Right. Now, can you incorporate them into your work? Because I could, but that wouldn't that be plagiarism? That'd be kind of strange. I don't know if yeah. I want to do that. Or something. <laughs> but we just had open studios in Rosendale. It was a huge, huge success. Around a hundred artists. Know. 100 artists around Rosendale for two days, and even though Saturday was a rainy, rainy day, uh, still people got out to enjoy, and I want to thank everybody that came by. Um, awesome. 99, Art Studio 99 up there on Belgrade Avenue. Thank you for your, your patronage, and people came and hung around and had a glass of wine. We listened to music. Awesome. We did all kinds of great things, so it was an awful lot of fun. Super producer Janice, uh, all her birdhouses and all her work are gone. Awesome. Which is great. She did fantastic. Good. And, yeah. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, family came and, and people we didn't know, some good, good old friends came and hung around both days. Good. Mr. Kurt and Miss Donna came both days, just to, left with something every day. Good. You know? And good. so it, it, was, it was kind of a lot of fun. But all, the organization that's running, running that open studios out there in Rosendale now are doing a fantastic job. There's not only home studios, but they also have studio uh, artists that are in, in kind of group places, you know, the old Rosie High, which is now Rogerson House for seniors. They use the auditorium there and put in, you know, a couple of dozen artists in there, and then there's a couple of other places around Rosendale that they do it. And it, and it was great. It was a great lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm we, glad it was a success. It was a big success. And I was, I was down at the Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market. Down Winnie in from Rosie Boston? Square. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it rained on us terribly. Mm, that will happen. At one point, I mean, it was rain and then wouldn't rain, rain and wouldn't rain. So we canceled the live music. So, but then we, you know, we just said at one o'clock, I said, Open Studios is already a couple hours in. I got to get out of here, get back to my studio and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the sky open. I mean, it was raining so that when the raindrops hit the ground, it splashed back up. Now that's, that's rain. That's rain. And it did that for about an hour and a half while we were taking tents down. Aww, oh, messy. But, uh, but I got to the house and it was full of friends. It was great. Good. Yeah, so it was a lot, a lot of fun. I was in Salem as it was raining and we just decided to do it anyway. It was fun. Yeah, Salem, Mass. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love I love going out there. Uh, the fabulous Rebecca and I have made some some jaunts out there to do some things. Good friend of mine was the principal of Salem High, Oscar Lazo, and he's an amazing artist as well. Ah. And and he started STEM and STEAM. He was one of the guys that kind of organized and got how STEM was science, technology, educate, uh, engineering, and math, which is a form of an educational tool that people are using in their classrooms to incorporate those those disciplines mm -hmm. into the curriculum and he added the arts to it this is years ago added the arts to it to kind of give the creative realm into into educational I love that co collaboration look at all these big words I'm coming mm. up with amazing and uh, but he was at Salem High so I, I, I've gotten out there a bunch yeah, of times yeah it's fun it's I don't fun. just go out for the witches yeah 
Those are fun too. Those are fun too. <laughs> <laughs> it's this time of year. Whoa. I know. It's the weekend oh. before Halloween. You know what we're doing at Low Budget Records is every day of the week this week we're showing a classic horror, f horror, horror film. film. Yeah. Dracula. I love Frankenstein, it. Frankenstein. The Mummy. Yeah. And all of those. The Wolfman. What would you consider like Halloween a classic? The movie Halloween? No. No. These movies are in black and white. That's how classic. Classic for they're... my generation. <laughs> okay, classic for your generation. But uh, the, the, big, the big prize is that on Friday, uh, we're showing uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera, the silent mm. movie Phantom of the Opera, and the score has been rewritten by uh, Dr. X at, at um, Low Budget Records. So this is kind of like it's going to be in 24-bit surround sound. Fun. Speakers all over the place. So we're looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot nice. of fun. Do you do anything for Halloween? Do you get dressed up and scare the neighbors? Uh, I like to get dressed up. Brian doesn't really like yeah, to get dressed yeah. up. So um, we're actually going to uh, New York this weekend. And um, my sister and her husband are both event planners. Okay. So, and he's actually from New York. So they're taking us. They have all these plans they for us. They have these yeah, plans yeah. for you. In the city you're going to go? Yep. We're yeah. staying in um, Times Square. Nice. We're going to do... 9-11 Memorial, we're going to do like a little bar hop, we're going to do um, Central Park yeah. and ride bikes and some other things too. It's coming up on, on the fabulous Rebecca and my pilgrimage to New York. Now wow. Rebecca's your daughter? Yeah, yep. Rebecca. Uh, and what, we, what we've done in the past is on December 8th is the anniversary of John Lennon's assassination. Oh. And, and we go down there for the day, literally for the day. We, last year we got on the bus at one o'clock in the morning. Mm. And arrived in New York, it just, it was still dark out, and so Times mm -hmm. Square was still all, all aglow. And walked up to Strawberry Fields in Central Park, had a nice breakfast, had a nice lunch, got on the bus at three o'clock and came home. So we, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, I think we might, I might talk her to doing that again this year, because that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I really I'm enjoyed sure. spending it. Yeah, while well, it's warm. Warm it was freezing I December. Know. And that's, yeah, so maybe it do was, it before. It was freezing. Do it before then. Do it. No, you got to do it on the, on the oh. anniversary. Oh, right, thing, right, right. And right. the thing about getting to, to Strawberry Fields so early is you're kind of there before all of the hoopla. Because there's, 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 it's Christmas a big, hoopla? big deal. No, the, the anniversary hoopla. It's a big uh, deal. There are thousands and thousands of people that right. show up. So we get there and we kind of like one of the first ones there. And there's a candle in one album jacket. So we sat around and watched people show up. And uh, then we said it's time to get out of here. Yeah. So it was it was fun. But well, we have a great show for you tonight. I'm really looking forward to this evening. Do you do you have a motivational? I sure do. Um, clip for us today. I segment. Do. I want to take the opportunity to welcome our good friends uh, who are listening on WBCA 102.9 on our FM dial. You know by now that uh, BNN has a community radio station that everybody is. Um, really getting charged up about. Yeah, and, uh, it's a big deal. We're, we're in discussions about doing a separate show for them Ooh. so that uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we don't know what's going to happen yet. It's still part of the discussion and all of that kind of thing. But uh, what it is, it's an opportunity for people to come and do you know, community radio, play some local music, talk about some local issues. Right. And I think that uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. Because people, are, right now, if you're listening, you're sitting out in traffic someplace or you're, or you're jogging around the Jamaica Pond or in the Arboretum or, or Franklin Park someplace, and then you're, you're kind of listening to the radio. And this is the kind of thing that we're, we want to offer here from BNN. Um, but first, I do want to take a couple of quick seconds to thank the people that are keeping us on the air here. Mm -hmm. We're really, really appreciative of our partnership and with um, Boston Main Streets. Boston Main Streets, of course, is that volunteer-driven organization that helps revitalize business districts around the city. They work with the property owners to make sure that they get the right demographic for the kind of business they want to put in downstairs. Uh, and they... Um, They've been doing it in Rosendale for over 35 years now, and it's been something that's been, uh, was one of the very first ones that uh, came to an urban setting, uh, the first one, and uh, then City Councilor Tom Menino decided Rosendale would be a great testing ground for it, and we've been at it ever since. So and it's worked pretty well from what it's I hear, done right? A yeah. pretty, they've done a pretty good job. The cats, is, you know, the thing that makes people so dedicated is it's not, you're not bringing people outside to tell the people that are living there what to do. Mm. You're taking people that have businesses there. Mm. You have taking people that own property there. You're taking people that live and shop in that area, and you're asking them to kind of spear 
head the, the, the right. renovation or, or the development stage of, of a business district that may be lacking. Yeah, which aids to the sense of community, right? Because yeah. they're, oh, they're involving people who live in the community oh, and yeah. looking out for their best interests, which is well, always One great. of the things you, you'll notice at our farmer's market is that people come and they, they, they not only come to get their, their veggies and fruits and, and some artists and things, but it, it's also a meeting place. It's right. people, people, people gather to talk a lot about what's going on in the community and stuff. So catch up with neighbors. Yeah, catch up with neighbors. So I'd like the, the big shout out and thanks to them. If you, you know, go to their website, bostonmainstreet.com. They'll, they'll give you a lot of information there about about some of the things that they do around the city. The other thing that I think is really important to talk about is this amazing building that we're in. This, I love this building. This great, this state of the art television studios that were erected here probably eight or nine years ago now, guys, probably that long. Do we, have we had 10 years yet? Almost? Getting on these. Oh, we're getting there? <laughs> around there, around seven or eight years we've been in the building. And what they did was they took over a, an abandoned um, power station. Mm -hmm. Anybody that goes back for long enough knows that the, the orange line went down Washington Street from Forest Hills to downtown, and it was an elevated track. It was like, you know, coming through the city and um, the power used to come from this building but it was abandoned once they figured out how to link the batteries together so that the trains could keep on going. And it was left behind. <laughs> and it was left behind here to sit in it and sat sat for many 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 years and, uh, and Urban Edge and B&N and the city got together and uh, to outfit it for Boston Neighborhood Network. Yeah, it's and great. It's incredible. They actually built a building inside the building. And because we kept a lot of the historical structure and so that people can still see how high the right. building was and the windows and all the brick and all the tile and stuff stayed in place. We even have the windows, I mean the doors, the exterior doors hanging on the walls out here, you know. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is this station right here, you're watching right now, Channel 9, is the nonprofit station. It's where nonprofits get to come and talk about their, biz, their, uh, their mission plan and all of that kind of groovy stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, great staff in there help help get your message out. People can call in and ask questions. But the other side, Channel 22, 23, I'm sorry, Channel 23 has, is where members get to join and learn how to use these great cameras to take some Final Cut Pro uh, classes, some lighting classes. You know, what would happen if we turn the station right? What happens if I reach down and, and turn, turn the clicker? I'm going I'm to turn the station that and see what's knows. on the other side. Uh Okay, turn it back. You see, the, <laughs> there's always something great and groovy going on over in that station. But it's an opportunity where you come in and as a member, you, you learn how to do all of these great things, sign out the state-of-the-art equipment, go and shoot the local debate for the city council, you know, what have you, or something going on at a local school. Mm -hmm. You come back here and you edit it downstairs in the great Timothy Smith lab, and they put it on TV for you. Pretty cool stuff. And this program's also streaming live there right now. So it, it's, it's a great opportunity, and it's here for the people of the city of Boston. So please take advantage of it. And if you're interested in doing anything like that, go to www.bnntv.org. Click on Jim Atwood's name. He's one of the cats downstairs that's been here forever and knows all the answers. So please give him a shout or an email and tell him how interested you are in becoming a member here at BNN. Do you it. like that? That was it. <laughs> but um, boom. Listen, we have a great show tonight. Yes. You got a segment coming up? I do. Okay, great. You know what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You are watching BNN TV's <laughs> It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn. This is Amanda. Hi, Did guys. I just hit the mic? I do that all the time, don't yeah. I? Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Please do not go away.
thanks for hanging in there, gang, and welcome back. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams. We're coming to you live from our beautiful Studio B, uh, and you're more than welcome to join us. Give us a call, 617-708-3290, if you have any questions or just concerns or want to let us know what's going on. I also would like to let you know that you can find out more information about this show from our Facebook page, and this show will be up there, too, in just a little while, a couple of days from now, this show, as all the shows are being... Uh, simul uh, being lo loaded up into our Facebook and YouTube pages. They're both called It's All About Arts. And, um, but one of our great segments, it's time to uh, talk about getting ourselves in fit, getting ourselves mentally ready and all that groovy stuff. There, I said it again. Sorry, Michael. But uh, it's, uh, it's, t it's time for our weekly motivation with Amanda. Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Weekly Motivation. I hope everybody had a good weekend and survived the rain. We have Halloween coming up, so everybody get their costumes ready. So the quote for this week is, you cannot save people, you can only love them. So everyone has that person in their life that they see suffering, and your instinct is to save them. But they have to learn to save themselves, and sometimes that will happen and sometimes it won't happen. But you have to be able to release the control of that and to love them and you know people have been on both sides of the spectrum and when you're going through a tough time you know you're not asking people to solve your problems sometimes you just need to know that people love you and are surrounded by you and so next time that you're in a predicament where you see a loved one struggling <clears throat> don't try to save them just be there for them and love them and that will be enough for them to feel grounded and to feel supported and hopefully aid to them climbing themselves out of whatever struggle they're in. So that's what I have for you this week, and back to Glenn. Thank you, Amanda. That's very good advice. We really appreciate all of the uh, motivating things that you give us to, uh, to keep us going through our week. Uh, but right now, it's my great pleasure and honor to uh, introduce you to our, our first two guests. Um, we're very, very fortunate and happy to have in the studio with us Wendy Wolf. Hello, how are you? Hello. It's my pleasure to meet you. And Michael Wilson, how are you, Hello, sir? Glenn. Thank very you good. very Thank much. You. you guys are from the Waltham Mills Open Studios. Yes. 40 <laughs> years old. Congratulations on the anniversary. That's really mm -hmm. fabulous to hear that, uh, that, the, that an, an open studios in, in a collection of artists has, have been showing collectively for that, that, that amount of time. Thank you for being part of it. Uh, Wendy, what is your role, besides being a fabulous artist, what's your role at the Waltham Mills Open Studios? This year I'm the director of Open Studios, so I'm Congrats. helping make it happen. Yeah. I also do all the graphics work for it. Oh, great. Are you a graphics artist? Um, I do design work as a part-time job, or oh, okay. full-time. Okay, mm -hmm. that, well, that's 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 great. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Will you be? Sh are, are you are you in the yes. in the mills? Yeah. Is it at? Are we calling it the mills? Yeah. The, we have. Um, we're in three buildings. Two of them are Waltham Mills, and one is Lincoln Studios, which is a few blocks away. Okay. Now Waltham Mills. What what was it? Was it a was it a thing? That's okay. <laughs> it's it's okay. We drop things around here all the time. <laughs> what was, yeah. Mike, what was the mill? It was what was it? Was it was a regular mill, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, there was working mills up until uh, actually the floor that Wendy's studio is on was a working mill up until uh, the mid 80s, mid uh -huh. to late 80s still. Right. Uh, is, is, it, is, is it a spacious place or have they kind of retrofitted it out to fit a bunch of people in? There's a really wide range of studio sizes and uh -huh. types. There's a bunch of really big live work spaces. And then there's, so like, I have a beautiful big studio, but then there's also small ones. So there's affordable right. spaces for everybody. Are people living there as well? Is it part of their? Some of them some are. Some people, so there's living, living. Yeah. Of, uh, same, mm -hmm. same at Lincoln mm -hmm. Studios, too. Okay. Both are kind of a mixed. How many artists are we talking about? How many are in the middle? Oh, 70 -ish. 70ish. Yeah. That's good. And yeah, is it, you know, I, I often wonder when I when I think of like Four Point Channel or I think of the of, of, of Sprague out in High Park or something like that. Is the turnover? Is it? Is it? Do you get people coming and going, or once with well, some once you it's, lock on a corner, you you're pretty much there. Yeah, my floor um, is one of the ones that has a little bit more turnover than others because we um, aren't private spaces. Our walls don't go all the way up, so. It's like a good starter space for some people. Others, mm -hmm. like, I love it. I can have a much nicer space than I could afford otherwise. Yeah. And it's beautiful. I love the community of people. Yeah. Just 
can't work with noisy or smelly stuff. Oh, so you, have so to, are you on the top floor? No. No. <laughs> well, we're on the third floor, so sometimes I say bless you to somebody upstairs because it's that kind of you can hear everything. But well, that that's interesting. So, uh, are, are there people doing different kinds of mediums in there? I mean, are there people firing too? I mean, um, we don't have any, any kills. And I stuff? don't think there are any Not kills. Really. There's a blacksmith and a welder. The first floor is a blacksmith, and then building the second building, building 18. They're kind of the like everything kind of goes there, and there's um. There's a lot of more sculpture happening right. over there. Right now, you guys are on Moody Street, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, and it's the first weekend of November. It's coming up. Yeah. It's so how could you find time to come and visit with us if you got all? You must have plenty to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> have you run it before? Um, I helped run it last year, uh -huh. and I've just kind of assisted for a couple of years since I joined right. the, the mills. I've now Michael's done it before, right? You, yes, you, I was the been... director for several years, long time in. Uh, the early 90s. Yeah, yeah. Has it changed, Michael? You've been there for a few yeah, years. Yeah, it's changed it, a lot. It used to be a really cheap place to live and work. Um, so there was, uh, there tended to be more riffraff in the old days. <laughs> more We're access all, to the building, we call it. We're a little more suburban now, <laughs> and a lot calmer. Well, that's uh, great. I mean, yeah, where's the motivation yeah. going to come from, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, Experience you, you, at this experience. point. <laughs> now, is, is there, there must be ample space to show. Yeah. Or I are mean, people the, actually showing in their, in their spaces? In their, or? It's all in your spaces. We, um, people also use the hallway space to yeah, expand say, out. Yeah. But yeah. it's mostly like everybody, like my studio is just like a lot of walls are just filled with art. And everybody, like the live, you, like the live worker. I think people even move their furniture a bit to make more space. Oh, no, you, I'm sure you yeah. do something to accommodate the mm -hmm. throngs. throngs. Yeah, yeah, our studios Lots don't. People. Some people's studios look that good all year round. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I know for me, it's it, it's always like, a, like, oh, I should enjoy this for two days. And then it goes back to the working st status. After you come back from your vacation down down the sure. down, down Texas someplace, right? <laughs> uh, what is what's Wendy? What's your medium? What are you doing these days? I do um, I do paintings and installations. Okay. So I do really very different types of work, but I do a lot of um, I have a like a phrase I use, which is I make obsessive repetitive artwork inspired by language and leaves. Interesting. Yeah. So That's the, great. So there's um, paintings are the language based ones, and I do a lot of. Um, re, like reproducing nature shapes out of plastic. Oh, cool! What brought you there? Have you always I, been doing no, that? No, I, I did a art, an artist residency at Taliesin West, Frank Lloyd Wright School of Architecture, and I was doing the paintings then, and then processing the way I was making works and mm -hmm. um, making traces of them and cutting them out, and then. When I did the residency, I was asked to kind of work outside of my box, you know, my little matrix I was in all the time, and make something outside of that. And there was a tree that had leaves that looked just like the kind of marks I was obsessing over. And so I reproduced those the way I did with my paintings. Right. And it just didn't stop. I just I got obsessed with it like... It un unleashed something. Yeah, yeah. So I've uh, been doing work all over the country. I've always wanted to ask somebody, uh, does, does a residency that, that kind of forces you to to step outside of your comfort zone does is that a scary process for you to go through oh it's terrifying yeah. but it's wonderful at the same mm. time like you go into it knowing like it was uh, you know first it was going to live in the desert you know <laughs> and no, i was given number one. yeah and i was given the <laughs> option to stay in a tent if i wanted to in the desert which i was like no i like like this is hard enough yeah. you know but it's like you're going outside of your world, but you're getting so much for it. Yeah, yeah. And having, you know, this, like for me, I got a whole other body of work that wouldn't have really Wouldn't spurred. have happened, right. Yeah, because it also was something happened when I was there that it went from being, um, like I make work that like a little bit about people make, like really like, and then I made this work that it was like, my approval rating went sky high. It was okay. like 95% of the people loved it and were going crazy over it. Well, you, 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 you Cause it was scratched accessible. off something that was, yeah. that was people were identifying with. Yeah. Michael, what, what are you doing? Are you, are you, uh, are you also, what, what kind uh, of, if you had to categorize yourself <laughs> as an artist, what, what, would you, what would it be? Painter, sculptor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. You've been at it for a while? Been at it my whole life. Yeah. yeah. Has yeah. it always been, what kind, what's your medium in painting? Are you using oils? Uh, oils, acrylic and oil, either okay. or both. Yeah. yeah. Mixing? Mixed no. media? No? A little bit of mix. <laughs> yeah, I mix things up. You don't paint your sculptures, do you? 
Oh yeah, you sure, do. Yeah, okay, yeah. great, yeah. great. And and if you're going to work on sculptures, what do you? What's the medium you're using there? Are you going right with terracotta? What are you doing? Uh, I've done some ceramic. I've done some bronze pieces, cast some bronze, but yeah. that's such a, a, an extensive process. Mm -hmm. um, I re do a lot of plaster, plaster okay. and wood, string. Stuff That's great. Like that. Yeah. And your space is in is in the mills itself. In too? the mills itself. Yeah. How uh -huh. long have you been in there? If you've been running the twenty eight years. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. Huh. Yeah. Uh, is it something that you're you don't need to compensate your income with? Or you all, or you also waiting tables at the local <laughs> bistro? Because I, I, I have to compensate my income. <laughs> I teach. I teach at yeah. the New Art Center. In good, the, good for you. I, I knew that. I was just trying to drag it out. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. How is how's the teaching going? And at the going? studio. And at the studio, you bring yeah. clients and students in there too. Uh, how's the teaching at the center? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I love the New Art Center. Yeah, yeah. It's a very good place. It's a great to work. place. Scully place to learn. Yeah. Um, are you teaching with uh, adults or the younger? Are you? Oh, just adults. Just adults. Just adults. See, I, I get the babies. Yeah, no, I get I them before they have the any babies. preconceived notions. They think I'm a genius, you know. <laughs> so they can. <laughs> they think people. you're a genius too. I'm sure <laughs> they do. I, I understand we have some photos and some stuff to look at. If we could bring it up and you guys can walk us through what we're looking at, so that we'll be familiar. That's um, Janet Shapiro in her studio. She does really wonderful installation work. Yeah, I love the. I love walking into space and, and getting. She's an amazing studio. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay. This is uh, John Thompson. He actually um, owns and built Lincoln Studios. He's ah. a printmaker. Um, that's him in his space. I think it was last year or the year before. Um, and it's, you know, he created a whole other wonderful location for artists right in Waltham. Look at that great press, huh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. He does really large prints. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I can't see who that's. Uh, I believe that's June Levinson's yeah. studio at the Lincoln yeah, building. Yeah, she's in Lincoln Studios. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of during one of the open studios? Yeah, this studios? is during open studios. Okay. We um, have a photographer come and get some good pictures. We have Metalworks um, artists art from Metalworks is a metal um, school in Waltham, mm -hmm. and we have a selection of their artists actually come and can set up on our first floor. Oh, well, that's great! And join us. Yeah, it's a really great school, and they do really fine metalwork there. Great, great, yeah. great. This is yours. Oh, this is my dog. <laughs> well, this is my daughter's dog, Murphy. Now that's he, that's sculpted, my dear. Yeah, that's some awesome <laughs> sculpture. And you can see he's admiring. Those are my paintings uh -huh. that he's admiring. That's great. What a shot. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? Well, he's that's very beautiful. Handsome. Yeah. Oh, and that's one of my paintings. This that's is one the, of your pieces. Talk to me yes. about this. What, what 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 are we looking at here? Uh, this is Don Quixote. Uh -huh. um, that might be obvious. Um, it, uh, kind of a cubist, kind of surreal rendition. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oil paint. And it's oil. Uh, what's, what's the size of this piece? That's uh, 40 inches by 30. Excellent, excellent. Mm. This is uh, Todd Cahill and Steam Machine Sculpture. He makes these fabulous intricate machines that run on steam power. And um, they, do, they don't do anything. They spin, they make, you know, they, 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 they just, just move. move. They're amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has a huge space in Building 18, and it's just always like a, just a wonderful thing to this see. This place must be humming, huh? Yeah, it must it's, be that, great. it's literally humming, yeah. yeah. And he's got all of his like machinery all around. He's he can do anything. This is in my studio, um, and this is this is one of my my uh, for my series of paintings that are mark making that are about words. Uh huh. Varying uh, sizes, right? Oh, look yeah, at this. Yeah, and this yeah. is an installation of my leaf cutouts. This, this is was, you. Oh, great. Yeah, this oh, great. is um, from a show I did in the, art of, the Ford, Affordable Art Fair in New York City. I was asked to do the entryway. Beautiful. And so I made this piece for that, and then it went on to travel to four different states. I can imagine. I can, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And the, it ended up, its last place it hung so far is in Waltham. I did a show, the first show at Lincoln um, Studios Gallery. He brought it home. Yeah, so Great. these are like real leaves that I've cut out. Um, I reproduce them and they're cut out of plastic that are like two feet, three feet long. Oh my goodness, it's a yeah. big piece. Yeah, That's huge. Great. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. 
This is from the history. Is yeah, this is what the, the wall, our, our floor, Artists West Association, um, looked like when they began it in 1980. That's 1976. Okay. 19, uh, no, oh, our floor ago. was started in 1980. The top floor was 76. It was a bare, empty space, and they built the walls. That yeah. In the bottom corner is Sue Hodes, one of the founding members, um, still with us, 40 years. Great. Hasn't missed an open studio. She's done 40 open studios in a row. Can that's you imagine? That's awesome. I yeah. can't, I, no, that's, that's amazing. And there's, there's some information right there. Yeah. And, uh, and the address and the times and all that stuff. That's great. That's fabulous. Um, um, what is the ratio? I mean, are there, are there more painters? Are there more jewelry? Is there more There's definitely sculpting? more painters. Mm -hmm. I think the... Um, it's definitely more painters than anything, but mm -hmm. there's a really good mix of types of artwork in there. And in the painting, we have, you know, the whole range of what of kinds of painting. oh watercolors, you know, yeah. impressionists, and yeah. you know. Some and since we're we we have um, the th the three buildings, you know, it's like really easy to just kind of wander through the halls and see studios, just peeking in to see what interests you, what's on the outside, and no pressure. And then you can go in, and it's you know, a lot, some people paint during the day. Oh, I've know, always said that open studios is an opportunity for us to see the, the, the artist in their environment, in their, in their yeah. creative environment. Mm -hmm. I think that it's so important to yeah, it's, people it's, to, for us to understand, for mm -hmm. people who don't mm -hmm. do art to understand that, you know, we're not just throwing the stuff on the wall, you know? Yeah. It's a process to it. Yeah. One day I want to thank you, Michael. Thanks for being here. Uh, I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Good luck with your, because you. they're going to Crown, it's coming you know, up. Your name is at the top have, of the list here. We have thousands of people coming. Do you have? The, it's, have I'm sure you do. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. an yeah. it's an amazing yeah. event, and I want to wish you both uh, much luck. Thanks. And uh, we'll try. We'll try and get over. I don't know, Janice yeah. and I. You know, I think that's the weekend. We kind of have nothing much, so we may Please we may do. take a drive over and look you guys up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, gang, you're watching BNN TVs. It's all about arts. Uh, we're gonna be take a short break right now. We've got another guest. We're only halfway there, guys. So come on back, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with an incredible encaustic artist. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thanks. Gang, thanks an awful lot for hanging in there with us. You're watching BNN TVs. It's all about arts, and I, I, I have to say that it's it's not often we get 
uh, and we have, we have great artists here. We have we have people that are doing amazing things like they are over in in, in the Waltham Mills Open Studios in their art association. They're doing great great things, but. To have somebody that's recognized as widely as an expert in what she does, uh, to have her sitting on the dais here with us today is is such such an honor for me. Uh, Bob Cone, Bob Barb Cone, thank you very much. I want to nice call you Barbara, you. but I'm not going oh, to it's because okay, Gina said don't do it. I <laughs> said it. I said I won't. Bob, how are you? Thank you for Good, coming in you. and spending thank some you time for with us. Me. Appreciate it. How's everything? Good. Did you busy. find us okay? Busy. I did. No problem. That's GPS. The GPS. Isn't it a wonder? I don't know how we got around years ago. I don't ago. know either. Um, uh, I gave it away. You're an encaustic artist. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, for our friends at home, give us a brief description or walk through what exactly is, is, is this thing we call? Well, it's, a, it's actually a wax-based 2,000-year-old uh, medium. It's hmm. the oldest artistic medium uh, hmm. in the world. Uh, the Greeks started messing around with it. Um, so it's fairly simple. It's beeswax and a pine resin to just make it a little less soft. Yeah. Um, and then if it's used as paint, if it's colored, then there's pigment added, of course. And it's worked in its molten state, um, which is where things get tricky because it wants to harden, of course, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is, is the process, I, you know, I, 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 I've asked others this and I kind of get this uh, roundabout answer. So I'm going to throw the hard one out here okay. first, if it's okay. <laughs> sure. Is it a journey or, 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 or is, it, is, it, is, it, is, is doing a piece in this, kind of, in this kind of medium laid out firm? This is what I want to end up with. This is what I want to have at the end of the process and have it come to that. Or because you're working in such a fluid and such a, a moving medium, uh, changing medium so quick, so, so, you know, is it an adventure all the time? Well, it is for me. Mm -hmm. um, for one thing, it doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Yeah, that's what I am. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't want to do what you've planned. Um, so it's a medium of happy accidents. Okay. I yeah, that's that. a great way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. How long have you been doing this medium? Gosh, I bet 10 years or really? something like that. Has it always yeah. been this, or, or is it something you fell into? No, I think a lot of encaustic artists come to it from other media. Uh -huh. um, you know, and sculptors and ceramicists were all kind of flocking to it. I worked in oils, watercolor, mixed media, yeah. um, printmaking. Everything. You've yeah. been in. You've been in. Yeah. You've been involved been at in it for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted. I want to talk about your your space, where where you work, uh, because of the because of the the. The, the medium, because of the way, the way it is and how it has to be treated, do you have a dedicated space to work? Yes. Um, is, is, it, is it something that's attached, is it atta attached to the house? Is it something that you kind of purposely keep separate from, from where you live? Is um, it? Well, it requires a lot of equipment. Yeah. And a lot of um, electrical outlets yeah. and so on. So um, I have two studios, actually, I'm working in right now, one mm -hmm. up in Maine. Um, in an old classroom building, oh, fun. Um, which is nice. kind of creepy and haunted and right. wonderful. Um, and then one in Waltham. Oh, you're uh, on oh Beaver really? Street. Yeah. Oh, I so I divide my time between those two spaces. Uh, that's great. When, when you're working, and it's time to, do you, are you working on wood? Generally speaking, encaustic is done on a rigid you know, strata because yeah. um, it can crack if it's on canvas. Yeah. So I work on birch panels. Birch also. panels, okay. You've got your blank panel and you've got everything's heated up and everything's ready, ready to go. Do you set a mood for yourself? I mean, is the Bach on the radio, on the, on the tune, <laughs> or is it, you know, is it, or is it the Almond Brother? I don't know, you know, is it something? Depends. you know, I can go from jazz to Aretha Franklin pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I think, you know, it's the thing is that you have to wait for everything. When you get to the studio, you're forced to wait for everything to melt. Yeah, yeah. So you have this period where you have to kind of think about what you're doing. What am I going to do? What get do I want to do today? And then you walk over and it's not melted yet, so you <laughs> go back and wait. Um, so there's kind of a built-in meditation at the beginning. Is, is, it, is, is it something you can work on several pieces? Oh yeah, I usually do actually. So Particularly if I'm working in series, I may have three or four going. Yeah, so you'll have one at one stage of the process, and maybe move to move to another one. Oh yeah. 
Um, you, you said something interesting earlier that, that I thought was made me think but that when you add the pigment, you're actually painting with it. What do your tools look like? Oh, well, they don't look a whole lot like everyone else's tools except for the brushes, mm -hmm. which you don't have to clean. By the way, which I like is, that already. I, like, I know. I, was like, oh, yeah. I like that. Yes. Oh, I'm so that good. sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you do have brushes, but you also have a lot of other scraping kinds of yeah, tools, yeah. silicon, um, you know, spatulas, uh, anything that's heat resistant. You mm -hmm. can't use anything but natural bristle because the encaustic will melt. Yeah, up. we'll take them away. So, um, but you know, pretty much. So you can use really cheap dime store and hardware store brushes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are, are flat surfaces like large palette knives, are they, they part of your, of your work as well? I use, I use sharper things than that to carve. Generally. So you cut into it once it sets? I a lot, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. That's great. We do a lot of carving. Now, because it's an adventure, because it's a journey, the pieces that you're working on, is there a point where you can say to yourself, this is done? You know, that's hard for all of us, no matter what we're working on. That's in. why it's my sixth <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, like, um, you, you know, you leave the studio and you think, that's oh, looking pretty good. Yeah, you know, that yeah. might be done. And then you get there the next morning and you think, what was I, I thinking? thinking? <laughs> exactly, like, why did I think, okay, back to it. Um, with the encaustic, you, I mean, just like oil, you can kind of keep messing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a temptation. Um, but one thing, too, is if you really screw it up one day, you just scrape it, okay. essentially scrape it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go in and keep building layers and layers and layers. And if you don't like the latest layer, you can make corrections. How long does a piece typically take in rough range? Oh, I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> um, you know, it'll particularly at the beginning of a series when I'm feeling my way. It, it can take one piece can take like two weeks. Oh, really? Yeah. But then once I kind of, okay, this is what I, then the next ones in the series, right. I kind of know what I want to do. That's fabulous. Uh, when you do your scrapings, are they going back in a pot? Oh, they go in this big, wonderful ball of multicolored <laughs> okay, beeswax. That. That, That's yeah, an art in itself. I know what to do with oh afterwards, my gosh. but I have them kind of all around, you know, so. Yeah. They're fancy paperweights. Oh, yeah. That's they're, what they're, they are. they're just cool looking. Yeah, they're very sure. cool looking. Yeah. Where have you been showing? You've been out? Uh, yeah, a lot actually. Yeah, That's why I've been so busy. Um, I have work at the uh, Boston Design Center right now. Oh, what a great spot! Oh, it's Isn't particularly it the new gallery. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, what a change! Yeah, big time. Um, and then in Portland, Maine, okay. uh, the Portland Art Gallery. I love Portland. And uh, yeah, that's a beautiful. Are you a maniac by tra or are you from Walton? Well, I spend part of the time in Cambridge and part of the time in Maine. We've had a place up there for about four years. I got up there for the first time this last summer for a couple of really? places. Yeah, oh my gosh, we yeah. went all the way up to some, I don't know, Spruce Point thing up there. I'm in Spruce Head. Are you? <laughs> I love it up there. Isn't it beautiful? Hardly anyone in Maine knows where Spruce Head, Maine is. It's it, how tiny it's we are. Unbelievable. I read at night uh, under the Aww. stars. No, Come know, on. It was beautiful. It is gorgeous. You've got, you've got some work for us to see. Yes, I do. Yes, you yeah, do. Can we, can we bring some of that up so that we can... And please, walk me through. Take your time. Tell me what right. we're looking at. I tried to keep it simple. There you go. Um, this is uh, one of my latest series. Uh, I think I have 21 panels in this. Wow. Um, or I had 21 panels. Uh, this is called Low Tide. And it's on an 18 by 18 inch uh, birch panel. And what I did was I... I used, believe it or not, I use a lot of hardware materials. For mm -hmm. one thing, they're really cheap. And for another thing, they, they really work well. This happens to be wall spackle. Oh. Um, I'm, now I'm, I've moved on to cement um, repair material. But uh, this was, uh, so I carved it. Um, and I, I was working from photographs of a beach walk I took in, in late January one of those days where everything is silver and black and white because there's so little light. It's so dark and, and, and cold. Um, and so working from these quick iPhone photographs I took, I tried to kind of recreate the patterns of the water draining from the marsh on the, on to the, the sea. sea. Yes, mm. that is exactly um, what it is. And I was fascinated with it. So yeah. I spent 
a lot of time on these. So basically, it's a combination of spackle, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, watercolor, gesso, of course, watercolor, uh, graphite, and then I did an, what they call an encaustic pour. So after all the surface was dry and sanded and ready to go and had all the other elements, then I did a pour of molten uh, encaustic over it. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's keep going. This is another one in that same same series. series okay. That same material. So these we can. These are beautiful. Thank you. If someone out who's listening on WBCA wants to see these, is are they being are they on a web a website someplace? Yes, most of them are on my website. Good, good. Um, not probably the last six or so because I'm a little no, behind that's okay. in photographing. I but yeah, they, they are. Um, I can feel this those moving. I can see. I can feel them moving. Can't oh, you? Thank you. Yeah, it's. There was so much movement of that water because it just kept draining yeah. and cutting patterns in the mm. sand. Yeah. And every foot I went was a different pattern. Um, mm. But I had taken that walk maybe 18 months before. Right. And I'd finished something else and was kind of thinking, well, what now? Well, because you can't really do your medium plein air, I mean, is the photographs really a big deal for you? I mean, you really um, use them? Usually not, but in okay. this case, not what I'm working on now, yeah. but um, in this case, that was the inspiration. Right. I have them in my sketchbook, and then when I'm kind of stuck, I may go back. If I end up in Poland, where is the studio where you're going to be? It's in, old, it's in the old port. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's an old port on Middle Street. Man. Yeah, it's a nice beautiful old building. <laughs> I know, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Um, what are you place. working on now? Is there anything you, you, you're going well, to dart to Waltham to work 18 by 18 was hard enough. So in costume, are they big for you? Is you that tend, too big? Well, you tend to work small in costume yeah, yeah. because it's hard to heat the whole surface at the same time. Mm. They become heavy, too. Uh, yeah. Well, now I'm at 36 by 36 inch birch panel. Talk about heavy. Yeah. Um, but I just really wanted to go larger. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing drawings and things and then adhering them to the panel. Uh, and that is my base, and then the costume goes over, and I'm carving down, th down through, so you can see. So I'm going to use a phrase my my kids have been taught to use. So your sloppy copy is a sketch that you put onto the birch wood to, no, to actually, work from. No, it's, actually, uh, no, it's actually to work over. I've done but this but, it, but it gives you gives you a, not a, a template really isn't the word, but a kind of a, a roadmap to work from. Actually, it's more mark making. Really? It gives me, because in costume, generally speaking, not everyone, but you don't get the thin, fine lines in your work so much. You, you can create that element, but it's kind of not naturally there, because mm -hmm. the minute you melt, everything kind of disappears again. Right. Um, <laughs> so what I've done is I've done my mark making and my fine lines and abstract kind of drawing, and then used that as a base for the encaustic for a painting. Okay. When you carve down through the encaustic, you can see parts of it. So right. you're thinking in 3D um, while you're working that way. Um, uh, when you carve in, when you, when you decide to, to start to cut, uh, is it a surprise? Well, it is because you can't, can't see what's under there so well anymore, so... <laughs> well, so, you know. so you can't really design what you're going to see until you get no, there. No, you have to, but if you're carving and you're not liking, you know, you're not liking it, then you go back in with it. More goop. <laughs> there you go. Hit, hit it with a heat gun Start and over. you're ready to go. Let it, let it move some more. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I want to thank you for, for being here, and, and as, as with everybody, please keep it, keep it. The, we want to keep the invitation on an open scale so that so that I'd love you to come back in and and if we could get a show where you could bring some of your work in it would be, uh, that it, would it, be that, that's because believe me you're not getting the full benefit of what these pieces are like uh, what looking at them on, on TV or, or on a website you got to really be in the room because it hits many sensors, doesn't it? I mean, it, 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 you can feel the smell. You can. You, you, the, I like to walk around and look at them at different angles and, and, and stuff. And I think that that's really an important thing. Is there going to be anything showing you? Have a, a particular show coming up that we can see locally um, that that we well, can send some friends? Well, Boston City Hall. I'm going to have a You're solo gonna... in Boston City Hall. Excellent. So um, that's probably the next big thing. Um, up with the city councilors? Yes. Yeah, or you're not going to be in there. Scully's studio. You're going to be up with Suzanne does her thing? Yes. That's a great space. Yeah. I, uh, it's it nice because it's busy up there and the walls are just these big brick, you know, big cement walls yeah. you hang from. You yeah, know? that's one of the reasons I was thinking of going bigger. 
because of just the space, it kind of seems to need a statement or two. Well, you just rent a forklift to get your pieces in there, right? <laughs> no, I haven't thought about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about no, that. No, They'll no, work no, it no, out, no. believe me. No. They'll figure it out. Good. Thank you so thank much you. for so being nice here with you. you. And uh, I want to thank everybody from, from the Waltham uh, Mills Open Studios. Good luck, guys. Thank you very much for being here with us. It's a great pleasure. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Um, Thanks again, Bob. Uh, listen, gang, you've been watching uh, It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn. I want to uh, take this opportunity to make sure I shout out and thank all the organizers for the Rosendale Open Studios. Janice and I had a fantastic time. Uh, uh, we, we got to see a lot of old friends and, and people came in that we've never seen before that, that enjoyed and stayed at our, our gallery and our studio to, uh, to hang out and kind of, kind of be with us. It's, it's what, it's what Open Studios is about getting to meet people and getting new people into your, your workspace. Uh, get out there and do something artful for yourself, please, this week. Go over to this uh, Waltham Mills Open Studios. It's November 5th and 6th, and it's Saturday and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m., and that's 144 and 289, right? Moody Street in Waltham. Please go over and say hello to them. Make sure uh, uh, you uh, check out... Uh, Michael and uh, Wendy's work because you're going to be really impressed. Uh, like I like to say, we please keep in the forefront of your minds our mothers, fathers, sons, and daughters, aunts, and uncles, nieces, and nephews on foreign soil. Please do something artful, do something creative, send it to them. Make sure they know you're re remembering and thinking of them. We'll see you next week, okay, gang? Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.